The UN Refugee Agency says that four million people have now fled Ukraine and despite apparently promising peace talks yesterday, Russian attacks around Kiev and Chernihiv have continued. We're joined now by James Rogers, Director of Research at the Council of Geo Strategy. Evening, James. Evening. Good to be with you. It's very good to have you here because um, I'm going to ask you a question which I think is probably impossible even for someone who works at the Council of Geo Strategy. What do you think Putin's Geo Strategy is? Actually, I think that's quite easy to answer in many ways. Uh, I think his his strategy or his geo strategy is to um, construct around Russia, um, particularly in Ukraine, the Caucasus, Moldova, uh, the Black Sea region more generally, a region where he uh, wields the whip hand or at least where he can deny or veto things from happening that he disagrees with. He wants to take away the sovereignty of surrounding countries and give Russia some kind of uh, imperial control over those countries. And there's a very simple reason for this. He wants to prevent, to thwart um, those countries from becoming success, successful liberal democracies. Because if, if that happens, then um, people in Russia naturally will start asking, why can't we have these freedoms? Why can't we have this prosperity? Why are we ruled over by this um, brittle kleptocratic regime that has delivered us to conflict and ultimately poverty? Do you think he's given up on the whole of Ukraine? That was his goal when he went in. Now that he's supposedly moving troops uh, around from Kiev, although I have to say that a Times correspondent we spoke to earlier said there's no evidence or little evidence of that. Mm. Is he more fixated by a Donbass Crimea region? Yeah, I think this is more of a tactical move. Um, yes, I mean, it's very clear that his initial um, objective was to seize uh, Kiev and decapitate the uh, government of uh, President Zelensky. Um, but that clearly hasn't worked for a number of reasons. Uh, so the Russians have now re- reverted to using their, their sort of old fashioned methods of shelling cities, destroying infrastructure and inflicting terror on the population. Um, and clearly the the armoured columns, the armoured movements around Kiev have also failed. The uh, the Ukrainians, with significant support from countries like the UK, have met, met a really uh, put up a really fierce, stiff resistance, and have even taken back some areas that the Russians initially claimed or took over. And and that means that the the Russians are now trying to manoeuvre to um, re-secure the initiative um, because they've had it taken away from them. So I think what this means is that there'll be um, a remove removal of forces around Kiev and their transfer to areas where the Russians can control more easily. Uh, But this does not mean that that his overall strategy of trying to take hold of Ukraine or rather to deny its own sovereignty has gone away or has has subsided in any way. In the meantime, where, where are your hopes or where do you believe hopes should be for these peace talks? I think they're more of a, you know, they're they're more of a ruse actually on the Russian part uh, to buy that time and to allow them to re-secure or re-establish the the initiative. Now the peace talks uh, took place over, I think, Monday uh, night and uh, on on Tuesday. Um, we've heard from uh, both President Zelensky and his team um, and the Russians that there there were some discussions. Uh, it was announced, for example, that the, the Ukraine might be prepared to relinquish its desire desire to join uh, NATO. Um, But uh, conversely, it would then require some kind of security guarantees from uh, outside parties. Um, That's an interesting proposal and not one that should necessarily be entirely discounted. But on the other hand, um, there's an important issue here, and that is that, you know, it's only possible to guarantee a country's security if countries like the UK or the US, nuclear weapon states, are prepared to see the forward deployment of their forces to Ukraine um, uh, to try and guarantee uh, the peace. We saw, for example, from the Budapest Memorandum back in 1994, uh, where Ukraine relinquished its nuclear capabilities in exchange for security guarantees from the UK, from the US and from Russia, um, that that this doesn't work if it's not backed up with some kind of uh, hard um, military capability. And it will be interesting to see whether the UK, the US and other countries, uh, perhaps Turkey, Germany, Poland, Italy and Canada would be prepared to provide those troops to actually uh, manifest a security presence on the ground in Ukraine. And also, of course, whether the Russians ultimately would be prepared to accept that. Thank you, James. Appreciate your insight tonight. James Rogers, Director of Research at the Council of Geostrategy.